you can, go ahead and start to close down your eyes. And as you inhale, allow your spine to lift toward the ceiling. And as you exhale, let it all go. Again, inhale, make a nice little audible sound as the air comes in through your lungs, replenishes that oxygen supply. And as you exhale, feel your tailbone rooting in through your seat toward the ground. And we'll take a moment to just center ourselves, recognizing all of the qualities and connection to people that have brought us here today to dream together for a better future for ourselves and for our communities. And we'll take all of this energy and use it to create a more beautiful world together with our knowledge and ideas coming together. And we'll take one final breath together. So go ahead and inhale through the nose and exhale, send it out to all of our sisters. Okay. Thank you for sharing that energy, everyone. And uh, welcome, Nadia. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Jamie Gloshe, um, Yate. Um, welcome. I'm so grateful you all joined. Um, it's really a pleasure today to introduce um, our next uh, Transformation Thursday retreat series speaker. I was just like, I want to work with this woman. Just everything that we talked about when I shared my dreams, my values, my hopes, my goals, it just felt so um, like reson it resonated in, in our connection and that I felt um, really a, a true sisterhood and a recognition. Um, so as a result of that connection, uh, what I actually was able to do was go into um, negotiation and, and talk about kind of from a really a strengths-based approach about all the work I've done, um, not only with like my boss and my employer, but also um, within the work that we do with the Native Women Lead, because I don't know if many people know, we actually are uh, primarily a volunteer-led organization. And a lot of the work we do, we do um, for our community. And um, that has really been what's been happening in the past couple of years is all of the events we put up, a lot of it is primarily um, what we give to it. So in an effort to, because we're also an organization that focuses on pay equity, it was really important that um, we continue to drive that conversation and making sure that we care for ourselves as well. Even though we are those backbones, like we do have to make sure we are able to carry on this work, but also continue to care for our families and our communities. And that's kind of where that conversation led me with Nadia. Um, so just to give you some background on Nadia, Nadia is a certified coach who specializes in helping women of color and underrepresented minorities in technology thrive, elevate their pay and positions, and fully own their authority. She's committed to helping close the leadership and wage gap one woman of color leader at a time. Through one-on-one -on -one group coaching and workshops, Nadia empowers her audience to lead authentically, courageously, and sustainably. She's helped leaders at companies like Google, Lyft, Patreon make positive impact they really want to make in their careers and lives. Uh, she does work with uh, women of color to um, be negotiators to get the pay positions and recognition they deserve to jumpstart their leadership unleashing creativity and intuition, get clarity to self-actualize uh, their dreams, and support healing um, from tech burnout before it happens, so looking at preventative care. And I think for us in um, what we do with Native Women Lead, you know, and, and how we identify it as Indigenous women, we carry a lot of, um, a lot of weight on our shoulders, a lot of responsibilities. We wear many hats, so uh, it's only appropriate that um, we continue to care for ourselves because we have a lot of healing to do. We have a lot of work to carry forward. So without further ado, I just want to welcome my coach and my friend, uh, Nadia Deala. Thank you.
Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everyone who introed and everyone for allowing me and inviting me into your space. So I'm just going to go ahead and screen share and get started. Um, I am absolutely touched and honored to be here. I'll do a little bit more intro on myself, but really this was, I just want to share how the founders of Native Woman Lead, Jamie, Jacqueline, and Jennifer were really intentional about what they wanted this workshop to be. So I created this workshop for Native Woman Lead. Um, thank you everyone for the thumbs up and the confirmations. So I want everybody to be interactive in the chat here. Um, but this workshop was created for you and everyone that they had envisioned to be touched and supported with creating a radical vision. So my goal is for you to be a little bit more of a radical visionary or a lot more to open your creativity and your imagination to dream big and create a values driven business. So that is on you to determine throughout this what your personal values are and what your business values are as you dream big. So my intention is to be as interactive as possible. I know it is a Thursday morning, but I want everybody to be pumped for themselves because a part of this is hyping yourself up and hyping your business up. So how are you entering this space? Where are you from? And one word to center yourself even further as you enter this workshop. So it could be excited, calm, so, so, really tired. Ah, so if y'all can add it in the chat and we'll just see where everyone is and excited. Of course. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> and let's see. And if everybody um, knows, so at the bottom bar is a little chat. So a little tired, definitely ready and need a lift, thrilled to Arizona, New Mexico. Awesome. So next I want to ask, so anytime you see this little word bubble, that's when I invite you to chat with me um, and everybody here. What's your business or anyone aspiring? What's your want to be business? Let's see what we have here. What entrepreneurs are amongst us today? Sustainable housing for native people, beauty and cosmetics. Awesome. Florist, floral designer, makeup artist, influencer for indigenous people, Oh, there we go. Now the chat is blowing up. Creating access for capital for women of color. Yes. Um, awesome. Mental health services, graphic designer, corn pollen consulting. Do you see how amazing your community is right here? Everybody's going to have such different visions. And I want you to all think about if you see this, private message somebody, write down their name. If you see anybody that you can collaborate with or leverage with or create combined and partnered visions with. So thank you for sharing that everyone. This is incredible, the amount of talent and brilliance that's here. So I like to just understand a little bit more temperature check, spill the tea sis, which number are you? So one through five, it could be multiple numbers, but are you still in the dreaming stage and still a little scared to make that jump? Are you a seasoned boss? Ooh, I see a lot of bosses already. Um, you know, newbie entrepreneur, less than one year mature. So just acknowledging the space here that there are different levels of entrepreneurship right here. And everybody, your vision is going to be impacted or influenced by how beginning stages you are or how seasoned you are. So when I take you through this presentation and this workshop, especially a visualization piece um, coming up, it really is where you're at. So start where you're at. And don't be afraid for the number ones and two-ish and three-ishes, don't be afraid to dream bigger, even if you are further along from being a seasoned professional and business owner, all right? So I am a leadership and negotiation coach for women of color and primarily working in tech. So my background was in tech sales. I was previously working um, as an account manager for booking.com under the Priceline group. And then also the first account manager for a company called HelloSign that does e-signatures um, and built the sales team with my VP of sales there before I was terribly unhappy working within the system and feeling a lot of lack of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the tech space. 
and I started my own business that happened to support women of color to better equip themselves to stand up as their realist self in leadership, regardless of if they're an individual contributor or a um, people manager and leader. So I reside in Oakland, so I just want to honor that I am on the homeland of the Ohlone people and that I am here as a guest and a visitor and thank anyone who allows me to reside here as a daughter of displaced immigrants from the Philippines. Other things that are part of my intersectional identity I do like to say about business is I'm a 4'11 shorty Panay. So I'm a Filipino woman that is super short. And if there are any other shorties in the room, you know that affects how people treat you in business. I've been called Minnie Mouse by clients. I've been called Sweetie. I've had colleagues tap me in the head. So it requires a lot of standing up to be able to own my power. And yes, love Oakland. <laughs> um, and so I'm also the daughter of immigrants and that informs a lot of my decisions on how I show up in my business, how I show up for my community and my family. And I'm also a mother of cats right now. So as my mother would like to say, those are not grandkids. <laughs> um, but that's just a little bit sharing with me uh, about me for you. So a little bit more about me professionally. My superpowers are detecting bullshit allowing folks and creating the space to, I see Jamie nodding her head, <laughs> from playing small to playing powerful, and also setting boundaries and embracing conflict. And that's for me personally, that I am really great at that. And that's something that we do need to do when we go after our big vision, to set boundaries, embrace conflict. Because when you stand for something, undoubtedly, there will be people and barriers and conflict along the way for you to stay standing in that. And helping people really reach and achieve their patriarchy smashing career goals. So I believe I'm in the right place for that. Um, and money and negotiating mindset. <laughs> so one of the things I like to say why negotiations is because when you level up your leadership, negotiations are inevitable. That's in whether you're nine to fiver or if you start your business. The more you dream, the more you stand in your leadership, you're going to recognize, wow, I'm, as Jamie said, I am really um, not at market value. I deserve more. We deserve the value that we achieve. Most of my clients are very much in this space of when they level up their leadership, they realize I'm in the wrong industry. They might realize I need to start my own business. I'm meant to be an entrepreneur. They may realize I deserve to go after that promotion. I deserve that. And all of those lead to negotiations at some point. So that's kind of how I got into this realm after starting my leadership coaching business. My vision expanded into negotiations because I think the old sales in me came out when all of my clients were like, okay, so you helped me get to this point. Now, now I have this negotiations and I was, there was a little spark in me that was like, oh, I think I can help you with that. Let's, let's, let's explore. And it became a part of my vision. So that's to say that your vision can evolve over time and expand as you go. You don't need to get it right today even. You just need to start. And also why negotiations? So I am really happy that we're so transparent about equity here is that equal pay day. Now, I know a lot of these aren't even for um, needed this to boost your current nine to five job. Yes, so that when you get more money, you will be able to start your business. <laughs> um, so the thing about this is that these are not holidays. Equal Pay Day, as you see here, Native American women, according to EqualPayDay.org, have to work until October 1st of 2020 in order to get the same amount of pay and equity as a white male counterpart did December 31st, 2019. So these are not holidays, y'all. And Latina women, even further, these numbers did move just a tiny bit um, since 2019, like Latina women were in November of last year. So basically, Native American women, Latina women do have to work an entire year to get equity. And this is why it's important to have a big vision for yourself, whether you're a nine to fiver, and an even bigger vision for yourself financially, success wise, holistically when you start your business. Because when you start your business, you don't have fixed income. 
the way that nine to five positions do. You get to create your income. It's the sky is the limit there. So I just like to share this slide to paint the reality for us of when we have the ability to create our own income, pay yourself, <laughs> for sure pay yourself. Um, so today's takeaways for you are, we're gonna create your North Star, we're gonna claim and align with your top values, and there's gonna be goal setting towards your North Star in a um, resonant way, how I like to set goals and make our North Star very digestible. And you're gonna get a free download gift at the end. Um, so if anybody doesn't have the um, worksheet that you can move along as a PDF or print out, I know they shared it in the chat. Um, and you can have this after. Basically, that's also for you, the worksheet, to be able to move through even after this presentation. Um, so I'm going to share with you now just a little bit of my framework. Jamie's very familiar with this. It's my um, Badass Woman of Color Negotiators framework, as well as my Real You Leadership framework. So I use the same concepts, just different divisions underneath. So radical vision, activate voice, expansive value. Right now, we're going to mainly focus on vision and three pieces to that that I've broken down for this framework that I've created. First, it's permission to focus on you. So right now, I'm going to ask everybody to give themselves permission to solely focus on themselves today in this session. And then next is to remix your status quo. So a little bit about that is going to be us getting our values and remixing what our values really are from this day forward towards our North Star. And then letting your opposites adapt, that's something that we're not gonna get into, but that is really just understanding what your fears are and allowing the opposite side to have equal energy and allowing them to adapt in action. So you can imagine the things that hold us back. Well, what about the other side of the coin? How do we simply give that more airtime and energy? But right now, permission to focus on you is about dreaming big. It's about claiming your North Star and committing to your journey. So I want your buy-in. Why would you want to dream big? So first off, dreaming big allows you to have way more creativity, direction in your business, motivation. So momentum, motivation, energy. It attracts the community of folks that you want. Now, Native Woman Leads has created a beautiful community that you instantly have already, but you want to also attract community in your family, in your blood, in your friendships. You'll see when you go further in your entrepreneurship, whether you're beginning or seasoned, you know that it really is about surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals that are just as ambitious, that are just as motivated, just as um, basically creative as you want to be. And those are the people that fill you up. So when you learn what your dream is and you're so clear on it and can articulate it, you attract those folks into you and you get to partner and leverage each other and you create more wealth. So dreaming big, I want there to be a element of passion and impact in there, of course, but I also don't want you as a negotiations coach to forget about wealth for you because what happens when one woman of color and native woman, indigenous and black woman get more wealth, we do better with our money than other white folks would and white males would. We contribute back. We have overflow back into our community. So I want there to be um, a, just a thought of how we can do that. So I see there's a question, how can you dream about wealth when it's not a cultural value of your tribe? Well, I, we can definitely answer that more in the Q&A, I think. So I want to get through this, but I think it's really amazing. It's, it's really on you what you would like to create for your values. But if you are going into business, you want to make sure it's sustainable. So at least think about the bare minimum of this is what I need to survive and save and be debt free. And then if I amplify that just a bit more, how would that actually support my tribe? How would that actually support the communities that I want to uplift? And yes, there's some other comments here. I feel wealth doesn't have to be monetary. It doesn't, it really doesn't. So 
you define what that means for you. And I'll share a little bit of what that defines for me. But basically, what I want you to think about in terms of wealth is you deserve to get paid, y'all, for your services. You deserve to get paid for making flowers. You deserve to get paid for doing graphic designs, for consulting, for creating equity for more women of color, for construction, whatever it is you're in, you deserve to get paid and we shouldn't shortchange ourselves and devalue our businesses. Um, So why values? Passion, wisdom. When we align with our values and actually act from a place of our values, we do get more confident because we just know we are living in our truth. We are living in the values that empower us and uplift us. And then we could create more sustainability. So who here has ever, I want to see it in the chat, who here has ever been burnt out from a job that truly was not sustainable because it just did not align with your values? This is one of the biggest reasons why folks, women of color, indigenous women as well, create businesses because we're not made to be in systems that don't accept us. We're not made to be in oppressive systems that don't include us in the story and in their success. So this is why there's been an all-time high in the past five years of women of color business owners in the U.S. because a lot of folks are opting out to create their own path. And that's what sustainability is when you create your business, to be able to believe in yourself. And yeah, I, I see it. Drainage, zombie land, burnout, it's real. I see some people making friends here, which is great. And then fulfillment and freedom. If anyone has any opposition to any of these, I don't think so. But this is what happens when we truly make the efforts and take actions to continue to stay aligned in our business. Because you don't have to create your business based on values that you see in basically the rest of white corporate America. It's not the same. You get to do it your way when you're the boss. And so I want to hear it in here, right off the bat. What are your current big business dreams? And let's see here. It could be about wealth. It could be about your impact that you want to make. It could be about how you're going to treat yourself once you make it or how you know when you make it. But what are your big business dreams? Hiring 50 plus native creatives. Amazing big creative firm. That's awesome. Support wealth building for Native women, able to quit your nine to five, just do makeup palettes and do makeup and hair. Invest 100 million to indigenous women businesses ready to scale. Damn girl, that's what's up. There you go. That's amazing. Um, National representation in Native theater and performing arts for New Mexico. Amazing. I want to provide daycare facilities on the Navajo Nation and affordable for low-income families. Big business dream. Dreaming, being able to lead other Black, Indigenous, POC business owners towards success and sustainability. So this is why I love digging into the dreams of by uh, Black, Indigenous, POC women because Do you see how your big visions always include uplifting other people? It's incredible. So to allow my creativity to evolve and have sustainability without burnout. Yes, girl, we would love that. We want, we don't want you to have burnout while you're allowing yourself to stay creative. So now I want you to try and just real quickly snap judgment, multiply those dreams by 100. And what do they look like then? For instance, I saw someone put, I want to quit my nine to five. So what's that times 100? Once you quit your nine to five, then what? Once you hire 50 plus creative indigenous professionals, then what? Yes, looks like community healing. Mm, I see a, ah. (laughs) So what do you have the audacity to do in business? That's really what this is about. Right. Overthrowing our imperialistic government, healing. (laughs) It would be liberation. And that's really what I have the audacity to tell you. I want all women of color, all black indigenous women of color to have the audacity to be liberated through their businesses 
through their careers, regardless of what path you choose, to be able to tell your own story. So sorry if I make you cry, but I'm not sorry, because <laughs> this is what, this is the core of who you are that's coming out right now. And so what stops you? I just want to really be clear on what stops you from dreaming bigger. And right now we are in a time of pandemic as well. We know that there are racist, sexist, imperialistic systems out to get us truly. But when you say April, me, yes. What stops us internally from dreaming big too? So imposter syndrome, access is a very real thing. Sometimes myself, but also yes, very much white supremacy. So these are all, they're real ass shit, real ass shit out there, right? So we need to make sure that we do come correct and we come from a place of confidence, from a place of our motivations, from our big whys of why we want to keep moving forward in our business. So even credibility, lack of capital, moving forward. So thank you for sharing that. It's not to put a damper on this. It's just to share the reality of why oftentimes we don't dream bigger. So here are some of the top fears that I know entrepreneurs have that I think falls under this. I'm scared to leave my paycheck and benefits. No one's ever going to pay someone like me. How can I win in a system that's against me? What if I'm not good enough? And I don't want to fill in the blank, my mom, my dad, my partner, my children, my friends, to be disappointed, to judge me, to be worried about me, maybe even to hate on me. So I've been all five of these. And sometimes I'm still all five of these. <laughs> Right. So every once in a while, I do get that even three years into my business. They're like, would it be easier if I just worked for somebody else and they fed me a paycheck? Like, would it be easier if I just worked for the man again? Um, or like, maybe I'm not good enough to reach that next level in my business. Right. So these are the top fears that we face internally all the time. And Again, there are real as fuck oppressive racist sexist systems that keep us down. So we need to be aware of how we are doing the oppressors work for them. And that's something I, I remember, I know I, Jamie saw this a lot in um, my group coaching programs for women of color negotiating is that we oftentimes do the oppressors work for them by keeping ourselves down. And that is from a place of protecting ourselves from avoiding rejection, from avoiding pain, from avoiding hurt. Because it is really hard, even without being a indigenous woman, right, to put yourself out there in the first place. It requires a lot of vulnerability and courage to face and go after your biggest dreams. And so imposter syndrome and burnout are symptoms of the white patriarchy's oppression. So I do like to call that out, that we have imposter syndrome based on what the colonizers standard of success and business should be right this is why we build our own businesses and we do it our way so why you shouldn't dim your dreams because one it'll take you out of your zone of genius y'all and we cannot have that we need you to stay creative and in your brilliance and what your gifts or supposed to be for the world. And it just connects you from your values, which equals less passion. And nobody wants to start a business that they are not passionate about or keep a business that they are not passionate about. And it stops you from reaching your full potential. And when I say full potential, that means you just like up leveling, developing and growing. And then of course your full earning potential. And I see a lot of folks saying like, ah, oh, fuck, I've been doing this and not fucking showing up. This is why I'm putting it in your face, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, but not sorry again. So this is the thing. This is why I like putting it because it's so true. We just forget. And we already know this. We already know we're doing this work. But every once in a while, we need lessons like these and literally a slideshow to see a gut punching. So my quotes are meant to be gut punching, <laughs> but a gut punching quote of, okay, how do I undo this? So a lot of what I teach my clients is not just learning. It's a lot of undoing, right? So I want you to give yourself permission to let go of all fear, doubt, and perfectionism for the rest of this lesson. 
You can pick it up afterwards if you want. <laughs> but at least for the rest of this lesson, I want you all to let go of that. So, and commit to dreaming big and operating from your unique core values. So this is the commitment I need you all to make as we move forward. So right now I'm just gonna do a very quick visualization for the sake of time. I usually can go on in this visualization for a very long time, but if everybody can get really comfortable and close their eyes or soften and lower your gaze, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I want you to take two deep breaths and open your palms facing upwards towards the skies on your lap in a comfortable position or on a table in front of you. And this is a radical visionary visualization made just for you. And when you release every bit of air from your lungs and your belly, just relax your body. And in your palms that are open up, I invite you to envision that every single thing that is holding you back from dreaming bigger, the judgment, the haters, the worries, the internal oppression, the history of your people, the fear of rejection, the fear of failure. Hold all of that in the palm of your hands. It is now separate from inside of you. It is outside. And feel the weight. Feel the weight of all of those things that keep you playing small, that keep you in fear. Feel their texture, feel their temperature, and now drop them on the floor in front of you or on the side of you. They are no longer a part of you. For the sake of this visualization, they are gone and you are on the other side and you can pick them up afterwards if you want again, but right now they serve no purpose here. So take one more deep breath in and as you exhale, feel, feel the space that is created when you are without those things and imagine all the creativity, the vulnerability, the courage, the ambition, the freedom that can be filled in those spaces and pieces of you. And without those things, I invite you to just quickly envision yourself time traveling to a year from now. You are on the other side of all those things holding you back from moving towards your biggest dreams. What are you doing a year from now? How do you wake up in the morning? A year from now when you are on the other side of your fears and following your dreams even further, what does your wardrobe look like? How do you get ready for work? Where do you go to work? What do you do? What does your leadership look like? How do you interact with your peers and your stakeholders? when you are on the other side? How do you claim your value? What does creativity look like a year from now when you're on the other side? What does wealth look like? What new dreams do you have a year from now? And what new challenges do you have? What makes you laugh? What makes you cry? What makes you excited? What makes you angry? And who is your support system a year from now when you are on the other side? How do they support you? And how do you align with your values? And when you clock out, so to speak, in your business, what do you do on your free time? And what are you grateful for when you go to bed? So just take one more deep breath. And as you exhale, 
allow that vision to expand whatever came up for you and just connect with it, hold it for yourself and take what serves you and leave the rest behind and come back whenever you're ready. Okay, so welcome back. I want to see it in the chat and invite anyone who feels comfortable and open to share what came in your vision so we could see. My heart is going to burst. <laughs> right. This is the power that you have inside of you. This is the power that could drive your business to go way beyond what you thought it could be even today. So I'm going to move forward for the sake of time, but one of the biggest things for you is you are worthy of your biggest dreams, period. Whatever came up for you, you deserve that. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. This is my biggest dream. I want like this as my view every day, <laughs> maybe at one point with all my family. Um, and so I just want to give an example as you see in your notebook, uh, in your workbook, that there is a space for you to write and draw. So for the sake of time, just do that right now, whenever you're ready or throughout this workshop, but even afterwards, draw or write your, in exercise number one, your North Star. It might take some more reflection. But here's what my old North Star used to be in my first year of business. I left a six-figure tech job in Silicon Valley in the Bay Area. I was making bank, y'all, <laughs> and I was deeply unsatisfied and unhappy, and I hated what I was doing. Um, and that, was, that came with a lot of shame from a privileged face of, oh my God, am I being so foolish? This is more money than my parents ever made when they immigrated to the US from the Philippines. Like, who am I to do this for happiness, right? This is like the issue of, self-actual, the generations that get to self-actualize, right? And so my old North Star used to be so fear-driven. It was as long as I make as much as I did in tech, I will be happy. And now my new North Star is, fuck fixed income. I'm going to be my mom's lotto ticket and make millions because my mom is one of those Filipino ladies that she's just like, I'm going to win the mega million, you know, and she's just like, don't worry, you won't have to work in your business. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. She buys stacks and stacks of lotto tickets. And I swear she'd be a millionaire right now. If she kept that and invested it or something, <laughs> but that's what she does. And that's my new North star. Like I'm going to be my mama's lotto ticket. She won't have to buy another lottery ticket again one day and to have overflow so I can come pour into the communities and people I love. My North Star includes closing the leadership and wage gap for all women of color in technology to support them be their realest selves no matter what fucking room they're in, to help all women of color learn how to be badass negotiators so they can be liberated and create generational wealth and liberated lives. So a lot of what your big vision could be part of your mission, right? Part of your mission statement that you see there. So again, Exercise number one is for you to fill out on your own time, but make sure your dreams are unfiltered and all those things you held in your palms and threw on the floor, they don't get to be in that little square of your dream. Don't allow them in that space. So are y'all ready to bet on yourself? Who here is ready to bet on their dreams or getting there? Awesome. Great. So share your North Star with 10 people. This, actually, I put two weeks. I had the chat box blocking it. But in the next two weeks, I want you all to share your North Star with 10 people. And Jamie knows, I always tell my clients, when I give you a challenge, you get to say yes, no, renegotiate. But here's the power of telling this is that it brings vulnerability into the process, which propels success. Because when you are vulnerable and sharing your truth, again, your communities will come with you. Folks will invite you into spaces that will help you. They will think of you. It solidifies its realness for you. It brings accountability in cheerleaders from others. The next time you see 
Jamie or Vanessa and you're just going to be like, what happened to the, the dream with 50 plus people? How's, how's it going with that? Right? Like there's, and this is not to scare you, but for people to remember like, wow, she's a big dreamer. I want to see what she's doing in the progress. And hopefully that lights some sort of fire for you, for yourself to stay inspired for these supporters and attracts your business community, sponsors, funders, paying customers. This is why it's important to share. People need to know what your gifts are and what you are supposed to be getting paid for in your business. So values, I'm going to try to go through this because I think we are approaching time, but values are personally chosen life directions. They're your inner compass that help you align with what's important. And I want to be clear, these aren't goals that you can achieve or arrive at. Your business goals are your goals, but values are not goals. They're not feelings and they're not morals. Um, they are your compass. So there are things you can embody and live every day to get closer to your North Star. So you can prioritize and choose your actions, set smaller goals, and make business decisions based on your values. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit of the practice of aligning with values here. So claim your values. In exercise number two, and I want you to come from a place of what happened in your visualization. Just what values did you notice resonate? So I gave a list of values that you could quickly circle for yourself and you can always come back to this at any time you can create new values or even phrases out of values like you know integrity is a big one for me so stay in integrity is my value not just the word integrity you could create sayings or expressions that help you stay in your value um, so that's exercise number two for you and there's something about integrating your values into your business so a lot of your values, I can tell right off the bat, is community, it's connection, it's sharing, it's empowerment, it's lifting as you go, right? Everybody here has those values in them, and that should be fully, always fully integrated in your business somehow then. Um, or at least if it's not every step of the way, once I get here, I can really fully live that value. Right. Once I fill my own cup, I can really, really fill in that value. And so here's an example from me. My North Star and values equals thriving in the Rona. So I'm just going to say it. I was a hot freaking mess when the Rona hit. And it was when, you know, at first we were supposed to have the original Native woman lead as well. And then it got canceled. But I had all these other speaking opportunities canceled. I had um, clients that were potential clients pull out uh, within a week. They were like, literally last week, I was a yes. I was just checking my finances and then quarantine and the risk of layoffs happened. And I don't think I should do this now. And I had to really pivot after a lot of basically allowing myself to be a roller coaster of a hot mess for three for three <laughs> weeks. Um, but I really had to look at what are my top values during the pandemic right now? So love, integrity, generosity, play, because we all need a little play right now. It's, it's super, like now that my, um, at least personally speaking for me, my anxiety has subsided. I realize I need a lot more play to stay creative and to stay joyful and to stay energetic. Um, and realness and voice. And right, Paula, Rona made you really focus on what you want in life. Life is short. Now that I think the shock has stopped, business has come back to me because I think everybody is like, wow, I cannot hide from my shit in the Rona. I need some help. I need some coaching. So it's, it's definitely, you're right. Like we cannot hide from ourselves right now. And we have to realize life is really short. So values translated into action for me that was giving my clients extra TLC for the ones who were with me and renewing with me and being generous in my, um, in my sessions. I do 45 minute sessions. I had been doing 55 to an hour sessions and everybody was apologizing to me for taking more of my time. And I was like, girl, please, I am so excited to even be sharing my gift right now. I'm leaning on generosity really hard. And guess what? Some of those folks renewed with me for another six months. 
uh, even if one of them was laid off recently, she still renewed with me for another six months because she saw me standing in my value and saw that it was giving her value, right? And so giving 200% to clients, not being afraid to still sell and market. A lot of business professionals, especially women of color, were really scared about sharing their gifts and charging people. When, okay, is Jeff Bezos of Amazon stopping charging people? No. Okay, so your gifts are not free and we can't let things like that. And my value for being a negotiation coach and a leadership coach and helping women get equity, I could not allow myself to be afraid to sell and market myself. I had to give myself grace for quarantine brain, prioritize place, sunshine and movement and offering, you know, some folks who really needed it longer payments. You get to decide how your values translate in action is what I'm saying. Um, I amplified my mission even further, got more speaking gigs, etc. cetera. Um, so the values and body challenge I'm giving y'all is to lean on your values for only three values for one whole week. Lean on them when you're challenged, use them as perspectives to brainstorm creatively and use them to make decisions from your intuition. For instance, what if you made all your business decisions from a place of love? What would that look like versus scarcity? Love versus I just need to make rent. What does that look like? And I'm certain that will serve making the money that you need to generate. So dreams stay dreams if we don't move forward in action to achieve them. So now you have your North Star, you have your big vision, and I'm going to leave you with basically one last piece, which is a goal setting tool. You may have heard of smart, um, smart actions before, but I'll just share a different version of that that I learned from a business coach of mine. But get clarity through your actions because your big vision just doesn't come from thought. It comes through action. So again, how I started as a leadership coach and as I was going through action with my leadership coaching, negotiations came in. And then once I held on to that. My business did expand and explode. But setting your goals, we want to make sure that you don't get overwhelmed from your North Star. Your North Star should be like slightly impossible, but it's not impossible. But at where you're at right now, it is very far. So we set smaller digestible bite-sized goals or some bigger size goals or meal portion goals to support that vision and move forward. So smarter goals SMART goals is a really big business one out there. It's being specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, timely, exciting. But I add the ER for exciting and resonant because I don't like doing things even if they're smart, if I'm not excited about it. <laughs> um, so here's one that I did. My first hire was a content manager for a contracted content manager in July of last year. And it has scaled my business significantly. But here's how you could use that format as an example. Like, okay, my specific SMART goal is to hire a content manager. Um, I can measure the success of this by stats and sales conversions. It is achievable because I created the income to hire. I can hire a part-time contractor though. That's the realistic part, not a full-time. She only works 10 to 15 hours for me a month. Um, and I can achieve this by end of Q3 of last year. And I was so excited because I needed help and I was bad at posting things. Um, and I was so resonant about growing my team because I know I'm meant to be a leader one day and I do want to scale and hire this person full-time and hire more full-time folks. And how does this support your dream and when? So when you create your smarter goal, you'll see there on that grid in exercise number three, how does this support my dream and when will I do it? So that's the accountability piece. And here's another example. I will make 4,000 a month of merchandise. So this is for retail folks, for instance. So, okay, if I have roughly $25 items, I need to sell roughly 160 and it is achievable, but I'll have to step on it. And it's realistic because yes, I'm at 2.5 thousand right now. And I can do this in six months, I believe if I keep scaling. So maybe you might need more smarter goals to scale, but this is the smarter goal right now. And then Exciting is, fuck yes, I'm driven and I want more. And resonant, this will help my family so much. And so how does this support my dream, right? So you can imagine, this was just an example I made up just to see, but I'm sure it is aligned with somebody out here. Um, and so 
your smarter goals are not your North star. I just want to make that a reminder. Your goals are not your North star. They are the stepping stones towards it. So a lot of folks might've thought your North star again, I thought my North star was as long as I make as much as I did in tech. No, that was actually a goal, but it was not my biggest vision. So here's the thing on exercise number three. So that can be for you to fill out afterwards. And as I wrap this up, now you have three tools for you to be a radical visionary that I hope you take with you at whatever stage your business is right now and take it further. And now you have powerful values to guide you as you move forward. And you can take the next steps forward with whatever smarter goals you do choose today. So what are you ready to claim right now? And I hadn't been able, I was trying to stay on time, so I hadn't been keeping track of the chat, but I hope it's good. <laughs> um, and I would love for anybody to share their big vision as they form it. And before I wrap up, I do want to share that um, I do have my next cohort of the Badass Woman of Color Negotiators coming up. It's on June 23rd. It is the program that Jamie joined and that we worked under. Since then, I've extended it from six weeks to 10 weeks. And we have some receipts from our beautiful Jamie here. <laughs> um, so I actually put it, I don't know if she knows how famous she is, but um, she inspired a lot of folks who, and here's what I love about Jamie. She shared in her Facebook that I saw recently that she has also since advocated for peers to also reach equity, which is what I think is truly amazing of you to not only lift yourself up, but you filled your cup up and you're ready to fill up others now. So this is the beauty of working with folks like us who are willing to leave ladders, as you said in your post, leave ladders so that the next person can come up with you. And here's another woman. She was also in um, Jamie's cohort, um, but she just talks about the beauty of having someone guide you and then your community. So even if you don't have a coach, I would suggest, you know, reach out to the people that have interested you in this chat or that you know in community that can support you and help you reach each other's big North Star. And then this is just another client of mine who I do want to say she is in tech. She is a UX researcher. She was part of my graduation cohort of February 2020. And she was super pissed because she negotiated a promotion during our cohort, but then all promotions for her company were paused in March. So in March, she was able, to, um, basically that's when all the company does all promotions, they canceled her promotion. And they had been basically blocking her from having a compensation conversation for the whole month after our cohort ended. So what she did was she took her lessons even during the middle of the pandemic and emailed me in April saying she negotiated a 55% pay increase plus a $10,000 signing bonus with a new company. And when we first started working together um, in our consultation call, she said, I just want to be a senior UX researcher. I want to promote a title. I don't need more money. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You can have both. I'm tired of us thinking we need to forego one thing for the other. And she is able to get both now. So <laughs> that's just something I like to share. Um, but here's your free gift. It's also going to be in here. Um, so it's just this free link right here. It's um, basically a quick and dirty negotiation guide for how women of color can do market research so that you can ask for what you want guilt free. Um, market research is very powerful. This is, I will say with the caveat that it is guided towards a lot of salaried roles. How entrepreneurs can do it is reaching out to competitors, right? Competitors that are also your peers who are in the same industry to ask them, hey, what are you charging? What does your services or products look like? How can we, um, how can I raise my rates the way that you have raised your rates? Who do you market towards, et cetera? So that's one way to be able to do that as an entrepreneur. I'm always talking to other coaches um, who are willing to be transparent about their business structure, how they do their courses or their one-on-one -on -one coaching even, and what their um, value is in terms of how much they're getting paid. But 
Salamat from my biggest heart. Um, let's stay friends. And thank you so much for going through this. I feel like I went through this fast, but I think I'm pretty accurate on time. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody, for going through that with me. Please dream big. You are absolutely worthy. And I look forward to getting to know some of you. I'm also on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever avenue you want to stay connected. I would love to be connected with y'all. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nadia. That yeah. was awesome. Great. Am I? Too. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope I was a good on time for y'all because we have more juicy stuff coming up. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll just stay seated. Go ahead and start to find a comfortable seat again. Kind of get your wiggles out, adjust in whatever way that you need to. And then as you inhale, roll your shoulders up to your ears. As you exhale, slide them down. And then go ahead and take both of your hands and place them on your thighs. And we'll just do some um, like spinal rolls. So as you exhale, kind of curve your back into a C. And then as you inhale, pull your chest forward and through your arms. Maybe even look up a little bit. And then exhale, rounding curl again. Maybe even dropping the chin toward the chest. Again, inhale, come forward. Nice broad rib cage. We'll do that again one more time, a full round. Exhale, rounding curl. In inhale and come back through. And we'll go for a little spinal twist. So take your right hand and place it on your left thigh. As you inhale, grow nice and tall. As you exhale, start to slowly turn a little bit over to the left, using that right hand on the left thigh to give you some leverage. And then you can stop rotating when your breath runs out. Inhale to grow tall again one more time. This is to stabilize and then exhale and maybe turn just a little bit more to the left. And then inhale as you come back through center. We'll go to the other side. So take your left hand, place it on your left thigh, your right thigh, sorry. Inhale to grow tall. Exhale and turn over to the right. Dropping the shoulders away from the ears, releasing any tension in the jaw. Inhale again to grow tall. Exhale, turn over a little bit more to the right. Maybe the gaze goes a little bit farther. And then you can inhale and come back to center. I know lots of us are working on our computers a lot, having to type a lot, so we'll stretch out our wrists because I feel like they get neglected sometimes. So just do some rolls in toward your body. Fist close. And then go the opposite way. And then open up your hands, place them on the tops of your thighs. I'm sorry. Yes, that's correct. And then just start to, I don't know if you can see my hands really, but you just kind of rock them back and forth. And then we'll take them and just kind of turn them as far as they can rotate outward. And just use your thighs as like leverage to stretch the insides of your wrist. Just pressing on that outer edge of your hand to stretch like this part. And then you take them in toward you. Fingers are facing toward you. And then just press outward, getting a nice stretch along that outside of the wrist. Okay, and then a couple more rolls. And if you do have the space, it might be nice to stand up for a second. Or you can also just stretch your neck if you're uh, chair bound just by inhaling, growing that spine tall again, finding space in between the vertebrae. Exhale to either drop the chin toward the chest or start to fold all the way forward.
And then as you inhale, you can start to rise, lifting the head, lifting your torso all the way up. I think that might be a good little amount of stretching for us. I just want to thank everybody for their time and their energy and for sharing your dreams. Um, thank you so much, Nadia, for taking us through that visualization. Um, it was interesting to look at things on the other side. Um, thank you, co-founders, for creating these retreats. I can't believe we're already halfway through. Um, but looking forward to the next three and looking forward to seeing the rest of the community there. So um, thank you, everybody. And it's every care package has been assembled by Alicia and likely her family too. Um, <laughs> there are over 300 care packages that um, are going out to uh, attendees of the retreat conferences. And um, they are really um, a really formed um, on behalf of the co-founders, like with love and care um, because of the time that we're living in. We recognize that this, these retreats are happening really in the time of this pandemic and our communities are at the forefront of being impacted. Um, many of us, I'm sure, have family members who are fighting for their lives right now. Um, and we are wanting um, these care packages to be really just us sending love to you all by putting in some redistribution of our um, funds to be able to support entrepreneurs um, in the creation of the care packages, but also the care of you all receiving them. Um, we know all too well that um, as Indigenous women, we tend to not take care of ourselves. We're always putting each other, um, putting our other people in our circle in front of ourselves um, and yet we are the backbones of our nations and communities and so we need to invest um, in ourselves and so we hope that these care packages give um, you um, some of that light and energy um, that we, we intend to share with you. Um, so wanting to share um, that um, as something that will be um, coming your way um, if you've attended one of the events yeah, and with that, take care, everyone. We'll see you next week. We hope. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.